This is part two of the grasshopper video series where I'm going to show how we can begin to make bricks that start to orient themselves to a curve. Um, it's a little bit easier than you think it is, but sometimes it's convoluted in the way that grasshopper thinks. You've just got to start thinking like a computer. Um, so I have the leftover from the last time where we left off. I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, but I also have a curved line here. So we're going to start simply, which is how we should always do everything when we're dealing with grasshopper. We do everything in baby steps. All right, so I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to take a, what I call a bucket or a curve parameter. I'm going to set one curve, that one curve to that one. So it's now tied to grasshopper. And I'm going to borrow some of the stuff we've already made just so we're doing the same thing. All right, so I'm just making a copy of this curve division, replacing the input curve with this one. And I'm going to make a copy of the box. That way I don't have to redo all of these things. And I'm just going to associate um, my box so it has the right sizes with the points. But if you remember last time, in order to get things to work, we had to you put an expression to, to make the brick. So let's, for now, um, get rid of this expression. That way we can see what's going on. All right, so we have our bricks. They're exact same thing that we did up in the top there. They're oriented along the line, but they're not orienting themselves to the line. All right, so what we need to do is take advantage of, if we look at this curve division here, there's some other outputs. So we have the points, the actual points that are output, and we have the tangents. Now what the tangents are, and we can display those, I'm going to hide these boxes for now. Right click and hit preview. I'm going to come over to vector and, or sorry, under display and then vector and display vector. This allows us to display the vectors. Vectors are important in Grasshopper because they give us directionality. Um, and this is what we had talked about in some of our pseudo coding earlier this trimester. All right, so I'm going to take this point, which is going to be the anchor point for the vector where it starts and then use the tangent as the actual vector. And so what we see is that um, if we follow this along, um, there's a vector at every point that remains tangent to this curve, meaning it's following that direction of that curve. And what we're going to do is take advantage of that, because what we can do is use that tangent to shift or rotate our, our brick. All right? um, so what we're going to do first is we need to change these points. We need to create a plane. A plane in Grasshopper gives us um, a directionality. So we're going to start simply. We want our bricks to remain parallel to the ground. So all I really need to do is create what's called an XY plane. All right? This will take any series of points and create planes at those points. But if we look at it from the top view, if I pull this over, we can see that they're corresponding to the X and Y of Rhino. Um, so we could just put our um, boxes there and preview them, but we'll get the exact same result. Right? So all we've essentially done at this point is transferred our location of those boxes from these points to the origin of this plane. But what we can do now is we can actually rotate that plane based on those tangents. So it's really easy to, to select. Um, uh, it's not really a rotation. We're going to align it. Right? So we're going to align plane. There's two, that, and they do different things. Don't do align planes. We're going to do align plane, a single one, based on a vector guide. So you can see that. Align plane, perform minimal rotation to align a plane with a guide vector. So we have the guide vector. We have a plane. Right? We have our guide vector, which is this tangent. And now I'm going to use these points, and it's that easy. See how they've all now made themselves parallel to that vector. So now those bricks are starting to follow um, that line. All right, that was fairly simple. Let's see if we can now build this up to a wall. Um, we're going to just start very simply by extruding this and then seeing if we can get the wall, the curvature of the bricks to work with the wall. So the easiest thing we might do is actually um, just take this existing curve, which is a straight line, and we'll replace it. So we'll set one curve 
and we'll replace it with this curve here. So what's going to happen now is this running bond will be made on the curved line rather than um, the straight line. All right, so we'll have a curved running bond wall, just like we would expect, of course, with some interference. Uh, but none of these are oriented. Right? These are just the straight running bond because we haven't used the plane to orient them. Right? So you might think that it might just be as easy as taking these points um, and aligning them. But because we've been playing with the data, right, the actual points that we have a tangent on are here and here. Right, so the list coming out here is equal to the list coming out here. The points here match the tangents, tangents here. But we did a lot of fancy things to mix up our list in order to get the right data. So if we just try to start playing with the output here, we're going to get a lot of mixed results. But if we start thinking about this logically like we did down here, we can begin, we can turn these into planes that are oriented and then sort through our data. So all we really have to do is create another XY plane and make that based on our points. Create another um, align plane. That's going to take this plane and orient it based on these vectors. All right. So now instead of feeding a list of points into that, we can feed our planes into that. And by magic, hopefully, if it catches up, it did, right? We can see we now have our wall. Hard to see it, but it's there. Let's select the box. Right? With all of the bricks oriented to that surface. All right? So fairly simple. So I'm going to take it one step further and then stop this video. All right, I was going to pick the video up again with the surface already made and just show you how to make the bricks along the surface. We're still going to do that, of course, but I was using some interesting tools uh, as I was making the surface, so I thought I would share them. Um, I'm not sure you guys know what they all are. Anyway, what I did was created some section lines that I was going to use for a loft to create the surface. Um, but I sort of just kind of made them randomly, and they're not lined up. But I want to make sure the surface is still within that 3,000 by 7,000 parameter of the wall. Um, so I need to make sure that these line up at the zero and then these line up at the top at 3000. Um, so it's quite easy to do. Uh, I can select these and turn on my control points. This allows me to control these points individually so I can move the end of that line. But you can see they're all, we don't know where they are so I don't know how to really move them. Um, there's a nice command in Rhino called set XYZ coordinates. And this allows me to set the points and manually select them or precisely uh, place them numerically, let's say. Um, so right now it's set to align to world, meaning if I go in and I want to set a number for uh, the value of these to line up at the bottom here, it'll line up to the world. So the world is X, Y on the ground and Z pointing up into the air. Um, or I could do it by C plane. If I do it by the construction plane because I'm in the right view, I can do it by X and Y. So my X would be the red distance, my Y here. In other words, I'm using set Z, but making sure it's aligned to world. If I was aligning to C plane, I would have to use set Y. Um, so just a quick understanding of that would be, uh, helps you a long way in Rhino. Anyway, so I'm just gonna do it to the world. And you'll see it's allowing me to move them, but all I have to really do now is type zero. It's gonna move those points down to zero. All right, so now I'll repeat the same thing for these three points up here and set it to Z, of course, and now say 3,000. Right, so it'll move them up to 3,000. And so now my lines exist right where I want them to. So I still have these lines here from my previous wall. So all I'm going to do is move these. So I'm going to use my snap, move one to the end. I don't really care because I'm randomly making the surface right now, making one to the middle. I just need a fancy surface in order for me to get these bricks to work. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to loft them, just leave it as it is, delete those curves because I don't really need them, and now come back to Grasshopper. So that's my fancy surface, let's say. This is what I want my bricks to align to. All right. So it's way easy to do this as well. All right. So we used a bucket here for a curve. But there's a bucket here also for a surface. So I'll take the surface bucket 
and I will say set one surface, make it that surface. So now that surface there is attached to Rhino. If you uh, understood what we were doing before, we just took this curve, we extruded it up to create a surface, and we used a surface as an input for the contour here. So all I have to do now is take this surface and replace that other surface. And magically, as soon as the computer goes through this, um, I can imagine your laptop's dying on this because this is a pr pretty decent computer. Uh, oh, I also turned it off, sorry. Uh, so your laptop should handle it, right? So there it is, right? This is that surface with the bricks aligned to it but still flat to the ground or parallel to the ground. And it was that easy. Right. The other thing you might not have noticed is I've hidden a lot of these things. These are, because they're gray, though I turned the preview off. Normally they're on, so if I have the preview on, right click on the right spot, sorry, right in the middle, um, you'll see all of the, the components that are associated with that. Um, but I've turned everything off. I can also hide the surface because I'm not really using it. Um, if I hide the surface here, then I just have the brick wall and you can see how that works. The other advantage is we can use this surface now to hide our mortar joints if we want. But again, you still have to go in and fix this wall so it works, but it sure takes a lot of work out for you, right? The other thing you have to be you have to really do is this takes some of the let's call it the design work out of it. Um, so instead what you're doing is that surface now becomes even more important. Right. You are actually designing the surface, and so when you're talking about it in communication terms, you need to start now designing the surface with a purpose that has a reason for why it's bending the way we did it, not just because it's uh, it looks nice, um, but then maybe you're starting to diagram the distortion of the surface or why you're doing it a certain way. Um, so it's yes, Grasshopper has made this easy but you still have to put some effort into the surface. It's not just a random surface. So uh, I hope this helps. I have at least one more video in mind um, and maybe I'll be able to do that this weekend and try to get that out before Monday.